Hey everybody, Bob Babbitt here. Welcome to Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Daytona and the PTO 2020 Championship. We are brought to you by Captiva Spine, John Hall Chevrolet, USA Triathlon Foundation Risk Partners, and the PTO, the Pro Triathletes Organization. Our next guest, one of our favorite people on the planet, two-time Ironman 70.3 world champion, 2014 Ironman world champion, the one, the only, Mr. Sebastian Keenle. Always an honor to get to chat with you, Sebastian. How are you doing? So good to be here. So good to talk to you, even if it's even through this through a screen. I know, even um, through a screen. I mean, uh, the backdrop is not Kona, but it's also <laughs> absolutely uh, crazy and amazing. I've been on the track today, and yeah, just good to be here and good to be here, ready to race. For for somebody who loves this sport as much as you do you can see the vision here, right? Where you could see that <laughs> when we come back here in five years, the we infield have 200, is... 200,000 fans. It, well, <laughs> and, but there'll be people in their motor homes who are racing, right? Who are going to be here. This could have 10,000 people and there could be races all week long and it's, it could be amazing. It's crazy because when we have been on the track, we thought like, I think they actually build it for triathlon, not for... Uh, right. <laughs> from um for car racing um it's just absolutely perfect for our sport yeah yeah and to have a track with a body of water where, yeah. <laughs> where you could run and ride and swim yeah. and never have to go deal with traffic with cars and i mean especially in this year i think um it's the only place where we could have a race like that with uh, such a big field on the professional side and still yeah you know um keeping it safe because it's pretty easy with surveillance you know like right. um people come in and out you know them and so therefore perfect setup yeah you you're also someone who's been in the sport a long time and we've we've all been have seen people come in and promise we're going to do this we're going to do that and it never happens this was a year where pto is still fairly new but what they've done with this race and you know in terms of bonuses based on 2019 have you been impressed with the work they've done? Absolutely. I mean, uh, to be able to set up a race like this under these circumstances is already uh, something pretty remarkable. And that's what we, uh, what we need as professionals, you know. I mean, obviously, uh, um, I, I had mixed feelings, you know, sure. flying to the U.S. And uh, you, you think it's the right thing to do under these circumstances. But... You know, like every other sport, like we had three major, um, major uh, uh, tours, uh, the Vuelta, um, the Tour de France, the Giro, Giro. Italia, the soccer is going on, like every other sport. Baseball, I, football, and, and I basketball. sit in front of the TV and I think like, and I just do my training and have no chance to race. So um, I'm, I'm definitely grateful for the PTO to, to um, put up this race, but also the money they put up on, on the table this yes. year. It's definitely, uh, yeah, something, something big. Someone could sort of make their season by winning this race. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Speaking of that, you like the, you like the big lights with, with all the best athletes on the planet. So you got your wish. You've got the Brownlee brothers. You've got Javier Gomez. You've got yourself. You've got Lionel. Be careful people what you wish for. Be careful <laughs> what you wish for. You got people from the Olympic distance to people from Ironman, and uh, how cool is this going to be with all, everybody on the, and a twenty meter draft rule? Yeah, it's um, it's going to be absolutely uh, crazy. I think uh, if you if you miss this this race to watch, it's going to be really really interesting. I mean. You know, until probably two weeks ago, I thought like, hmm, this is basically a present handed to the ITU guys um, for free, more or less. Yes. Um, but now with the dra draft rule, with 20 meter draft rule yeah. and be being on the track, um, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's a, it's a little longer swim, which you think would help the ITU guys out. But the bike ride being 20 meters and... The wind is going to be a factor, right? You've got to know how to ride with the wind, against the wind, crosswind. What What did you gain? Did you go up on the bank at all while you're riding? Uh, not really. There's no. I mean, I, I'm fast on a bike, but not like 300k an hour. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't really need the, you don't the need banks. The bank. But yeah. um, but no. I mean, obviously, I, we just played around a little bit. Um, right. 
but without doing yeah. anything stupid really but yeah i mean that that that's um 100 right you know with uh this buy course a lot of people think a flat buy course is an easy buy course it's actually the other way around um a flat buy course like this is a super hard buy course because you can never step off the gas you have never a chance to recover you know there's no corners where you can coast in right before a corner there's no downhills where you can you know relax a little bit like you have to be in the arrow position all of the time it's gonna be really really hard and um and then you gotta yeah. get off and run yep <laughs> <laughs> is there a run yeah there is a run yeah. i totally forgot what triathlon was about but yeah um swim swim bike run yeah you had a did you have a bike didn't you have a bike crash and uh, d during COVID time so it's not like you messed any races or anything <laughs> right yeah but you're all recovered Uh, yes, uh, 100% recovered. Um, I was really lucky with uh, the people that uh, you know take care, took care of me. Yeah, um, it's uh, two two and a half months uh, ago now, so I definitely missed some swimming, but uh, still, I'm I'm in good good shape in in a swim, and uh, so therefore, no no problems uh, with the collarbone. So I look back at uh, at you know 70.3 worlds in Nice. And you had a, a great run there, right? Yeah, you you end up uh, what 10, 109 for the for the run there. Had a great run. Outran you know, Bart. You beat out Bart on us by four seconds. Outran Alistair and, and a bunch of other guys. You come away with some confidence in terms of your run from from that race. Absolutely, um, especially for for the training. I realized um, that uh, that I'm still you know young enough to <laughs> to improve you are you're a young guy uh, in the in the in the run and um especially considering the the circumstance before the race i was like super happy but you know how it is in triathlon you know i mean uh, part of the reason why I, i i i was able to run that fast was that i had a really weak bike performance on sunday mm. it has to be all top notch otherwise i get my ass handed <laughs> to me <Yeah. laughs> which doesn't happen very often but mm. fourth there Uh, with and you'd look at that course, uh, especially with the bike, uh, with a hilly course at Nice, and say, "Well, this does not play into Sebastian's strength." So you're getting getting a fourth there, and then getting you know getting third in Kona. That that's a great one month's worth of work, right? And in terms of in terms of finishing up the season that way, you had to be happy with that. I know you want to win both of them, but were you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just you talking about it, <laughs> I, I get tears in my eyes that, that I didn't have the chance uh, to, to race this year as much as I wanted to. But um, yeah, I mean, Sunday, Sunday is the chance. Yeah, <laughs> Sunday is, is, is a big one. Yeah. Um, the other thing that, that happens in a year like this is you really don't know what form other people are in <laughs> because nobody's raced at all. So well, the ITU guys raced quite a bit, so... So you have a yeah. sense for, for those guys. I mean, do you go into this looking at what, what some of the guys have done? Or you pretty absolutely. much... Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I enjoy watch all kinds of sport, but obviously, uh, I mean, I love to, to watch uh, triathlon on TV as well. So therefore, of course, I watch all the, the short course uh, races and yeah. So who are you, who are you thinking about? Vincent, Vincent Louis is uh, definitely one of the, the guys to beat, but... I mean, for me, like the main favorite will be Alistair. Alistair yes. Brownlee, he brings the complete package and I think that's what you need here. But um, I think he has the experience as well, you know, like spending a lot of uh, time on the TT bike. So he combines the best of both mm. worlds. You know, he still has the top end speed of the ITU guys. Uh, he just uh, recently proved that. Um, and... And then he has the endurance of the long course athlete. So he will be tough to, to beat. But if somebody could beat him, it's probably Vincent Louis. So when you look back at your career, and you've been doing this forever and ever and ever, and had so many great races, what do you look at as, the, as your favorite race experience? Oh, that's a tough question. You know, it's... Uh, that's why I'm, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's... Uh, um, the thing is really I, I have so many great memories about certain races and, and yeah. uh, every race has something special to it. Um, I would still say Xterra in Maui is one of the best races I've, I've done, um, but not because whatever it has the biggest crowd or it has the mo most meaningful win or whatsoever. 
but it's more like i i always went there you know after kona like there was no pressure um i just enjoyed the, right. the race really and i didn't had any expectations with all the other races you know you go there you have very high expectations and of course it also brings spice to it and i love it for sure but just like for the pure joy of the sport it's uh, maui and i love the surroundings there and, and everything but obviously like I mean, the biggest stage is somewhere else. <laughs> yes. When, f from your perspective, um, how has the sport changed for, for the better over, over the last number of years? Or has it? Um, it's difficult. I mean, the field got better. Yes. Um, I think uh, we have more opportunities to, to race. Um, that's for sure. When I started, we had like three or four 70.3 races worldwide. Right. Now <laughs> you can do like three every or four weekend. every weekend, yeah. usually, <laughs> yeah. in a normal year. Um, but then also other things have changed. When I, uh, when I started and I got, got to a certain level, um, I, I saw there was more appreciation about the professionals in the sport, mm. especially from the side of um, the organ organizers. Right. Now it's getting more and more difficult. Like um, there are like really significant um, cuts in price money, and uh, combine that with a stronger and stronger field, it's uh, difficult to to see why that needs to happen. That's interesting. So you're saying that uh, with maybe less emphasis on the pro fields for the race director because the race director is probably thinking, hey, I'm getting my dollars from the age groupers. Are the pros bringing me more age groupers? Well, I mean, obviously, it's, um, there's no right to, to, to get money in the sport. You know, I mean, if the pros are not able to bring something to the table, make the sport a better sport and help the organizers to get the amateurs to the line and right. provide um, a good stage for the, for the organization and for the event, um, obviously they should not get paid. Why should they get paid? Um, but I think a lot of um, professionals now understand that and they're doing a good job in promoting job. the event and, uh, and the sport and then they need to get paid. How have you changed as an athlete over this last five, six years? Um, when I started the sport, you know, it was all about winning, proving myself against, against other guys, um, you know, gaining some self-esteem right. and stuff like that. And uh, I, over the years, I started to really enjoy the level of freedom I have in the sport, you know, being able to, to, to decide pretty much everything on my, on my own yeah. or with my team is is something really special for sure and uh at one point you kind of like understand what what level of freedom do you ha you have i mean <laughs> probably you need to grow a little bit uh older to 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 realize that yeah like like you said at, at one point it was all about winning if i didn't win then it wasn't a successful weekend exactly like i there was no looking left and right i didn't enjoy anything or not really i mean I just wanted to go to the to the place where the race happens, win the race, and go back home. And if I didn't win, it was a shitty trip, you know. Right. Um, but uh, now it's more like, <laughs> I mean, not that I don't want to win, but I try to soak it all in and uh, appreciate that I'm able to live this lifestyle. <laughs> if you're able to come to a place like this yeah, exactly. and ride your bike where cars yeah. are going, you know, yeah. 200 miles exactly. an hour. You got it. Yeah, and and when we come back here in five years and we see, you know, hopefully ten thousand people <laughs> racing and this is on national television live, that's gonna be pretty cool. Sounds like a good idea. I love it, <laughs> Sebastian Keenley. Always such a pleasure to get to Thanks, chat Bob. with you. Thanks for having Sebastian me. Sebastian Keenley has been our guest, everybody. Again, this is Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Daytona PTO 2020 Championship. Hold on, we'll be right back.